Hey guys, welcome to Lexington. This is the Hometown Series. One of the most dominant pitchers in the National League. He struck him out! 16 Ks from Bueller! Before he was striking out batters in front of 50,000 plus at Dodger Stadium, pitching seven shutout innings in the World Series rubbing shoulders with some of the best in the sport at the All-Star Game. For Walker Bueller, it all began here in Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, I mean, there's some staples in Lexington. Obviously, Keeneland is, is the big one that, that everyone's heard of, that in Rupp Arena. So, you know, going to UK basketball games, going to the horse races is part of growing up here. And, you know, we'll see a little bit of that here when we go around. Lexington's it's idyllic. Just take some time and drive around the horse farms. Great small town, intimate with kind of a big town feel. Just a great place to raise kids and grow up. The big Lexington Cemetery is like the old cemetery here. So my high school Henry Clay is named after this guy. And you can see like his tombstone's like 200 feet tall. So now we're kind of officially in downtown Lexington. So up here that's called Thoroughbred Park. So for the entrance to the city, that's what you first see, those big bronze horses. I grew up in a house on Cooper Drive, which is in the, the Chevy Chase area of Lexington, and kind of my catty corner neighbor is now one of my best friends. We ended up going to high school together. So this is my first house here, that little stone house. And we moved out of that area for a little bit and then ended up moving back to, to a street called Lakewood, and you know, same kind of thing, a couple of my best friends living on the same street, and. I was about two blocks from my Little League park, so um, we walked to a lot of games back in the day. Oh, the Buddha baby. <laughs> he was just an energetic kid from day one, and, you know, I'm a, a sports nut. I just remember from day one throwing ball, whether it's football, hitting wiffle ball, just, you know, dad and kid. Just energetic, always been outgoing, fun-loving, just a great kid. So now we're heading down to Ecton Park where uh, we all play Little League. Ecton Park is where Walker spent his early days playing for the Phillies of the Eastern Little League. This is, uh, this is Ecton Park, Eastern Little League, where we all kind of grew up and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it kind of has this mystical feel growing up Ecton Park. Uh, Eastern Little League is, is a pretty big deal around here. There's a couple little leagues, but most people want to play at Eastern, and we got to, and we had a lot of fun, man. We, had, we ended up having 11 seniors on my high school team that all played at Ecton together, so didn't help us out too much. We weren't very good, but uh, we had a good time. I think I'm on here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. If you win the district or go to state and stuff like that. So we won the district my last year. So they've they fixed it up a little bit since I was here. We didn't have these dugouts and it was just a little bit different. And then they've kind of renovated that lower field. So what happens is you play in the minor leagues when you're younger down there. And then when you're nine through 12, when you're in actual little league, you get to play on this field with the trees and all that. So uh, if you hit one over the trees, that meant Hit a, hit a bomb. Lots of fun memories from, from playing at Ecton. I won the home run derby one year, which was pretty cool. And, and then I have a strikeout record, which I think was just shattered by a young kid, which I didn't really like, but um, I had it for a little while. Oh, I felt like a king back then. You know, you set any kind of record at the Little League where you've been running around for years and years. I, I think it was a, a really cool deal for me at the time. When I coached Little League, I picked him when he was nine. I knew he could throw, but he could hit, he could field. And so for a nine years old, when you're coaching Little League, the really good ones, you just try to get out of the way and keep it fun. He was always a year younger for his grade, but he always not only played at his grade, but played up. So, I mean, when he's 12, 13, and he's playing against 14, 15 year olds, and he's competing, it's like, wow. So now we're at uh, Suggins, right here on Romney. So okay. used to come here a lot growing up. Figured we'd show you guys around. Where my middle school and, and elementary school are, they're right up the street, about three blocks is, is Suggins and Wheelers, which are the two places that we always grew up eating at. Elementary school we went to Wheelers and, and middle school we went to Suggins. So 
Uh, no, I'm excited for you guys to see it. So I'd recommend chicken finger salad, pasta salad, like the blackened chicken we used to get a lot. Just chicken fingers, they have spicy ones that they have a pretty good little sauce of. Cheese fries or the hot brown. It's like an open-faced turkey sandwich with like a cheese sauce all over it and bacon. It's, it's uh, very healthy. <laughs> The chicken tenders at Suggins are, are kind of what everybody used to get back in the day, for sure. Uh, they also have a Tuesday spaghetti special, which, which was a big deal around here. I think the whole thing behind Suggins is that it's something that we've gone to our, basically our entire lives. So it's comfortable and home, basically. It's a small restaurant, so anytime you're in there, you basically talk to everybody that's sitting there and eating. We went every Friday in middle school. Food's good, company's better. Yes, ma'am. My granddaughter would like a selfie with you. Sure. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. She's a bit a softball player. Awesome. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> yep, no problem. So these are fried banana peppers. Uh, kind of a southern thing, I guess. <laughs> Comes with cocktail sauce, but I like mine with ranch. So. We went for the chicken finger salad, a little buffalo on the chicken. So this is the, the staple here for me. You know, we'd play or whatever, and there used to be a little ice cream place. We'd either come and eat or go and get ice cream. I think that was kind of the, the post-game routine for most of us. You know, back in the day, obviously, we probably made this trip in reverse more often, but uh, no, we'll just head over to the high school and look around real quick. So this is like how I would have driven to school. We've got our little, our baseball field, and then our little football stadium. It's not crazy, but it's all right. Henry Clay had a pretty proud baseball tradition when I got there. Colin Cowgill played there, and a lot of other guys that, that had made a career out of baseball. And, you know, I transferred schools in eighth grade so that I could play for Henry Clay. You know, it was just, it was, that was the school you always wanted to play at. And, and I remember, you know, getting to wear that uniform for the first time and, and how cool that was for me at the time. So this is the high school field what we call it now. We had to do all the work ourselves and get it all ready to go. I rebuilt this mound before our senior year. What's going on, dude? All right. Same old. Yeah. So this is Jordan Torrance, Coach Torrance, our, our high school coach for my last three years. He was here the whole time, but uh, the head honcho, my last three. Very good student, advanced classes, AP classes, did really well in school. We called him up to varsity as a freshman, so he got to pitch varsity as a freshman. And that's kind of, he made a name for himself as a freshman. He came in, won some big games for us. I was the pitching coach his freshman year, so then his sophomore year, I took over as the head coach, and was his head coach his sophomore through senior year. Yeah, he took over my sophomore year, and at that time, I'd already been starting to get recruited and, and things like that, so uh, my junior and senior year, I really got to kind of feel like an assistant coach, and, and I'm sure he would say the same thing. I, I remember making practice plans and highlighting the games that I was gonna pitch, and it's just funny looking back and how important all those little things felt at the time, and you know, at the time they were important to us. Very cerebral kid at a young age. You know, he wanted to learn more and more uh, about his mechanics, ability to compete, you know, how to really attack hitters. Freshman year, you knew he was gonna be good, and then sophomore year, you realized, okay, this guy's gonna be special. And then his junior year, that's when it kind of blew up to everybody knew who he was. Being a four-year starter put Walker in a special group of players that had their jerseys retired by the school. This is Walker's jersey. He was number 12 at Henry Clay, graduated in 2012. We knew that he was going to be special in our program and special in the history of Henry Clay. So it was an honor to get to put number 12 up on the wall and for something for the kids to see every day. It's pretty cool. Um, at Henry Clay, you have to be a four-year starter to, to get your name hung up on the wall. And fortunately, I won, a, won one big game my, my freshman year, so I was allowed to get it up there. Yeah, so this was our dugout. Back in the day, I usually kind of sat in here. I mean, I played for the most part, so we weren't in here too much. We called that the deer stand. So like my senior year, the inside of it was cages and stuff. And there was like this thing, like, you know, a story high with like this big platform. We had couches and all sorts of stuff up in there. If it was nice, we'd be in the deer stand. If it wasn't, we had like a little thing with a TV up there. We'd, we bought like rabbit ears, you know? So we'd like watch football games up there and hang out. He's kind of a legend to these guys. They see him on TV, they hear me talk about him. And so when he's around, you can tell that there's a different, you know, the kids act differently when he's here, when they see him here, 
having Walker have the success he's had, every new milestone he reaches, we're able to use it to our kids. Of, you know, this is what can happen if you stay true to what you're doing. I made a list one time of all the different coaches that Walker's had through all the different youth levels and travel teams and everything around town, and it was about 30. And they come from all the neighborhoods around here in Lexington. Walker played at Eastern Little League, and then he played at, at Henry Clay High School. Really, Walker is the embodiment of all of that support. And so when he's in the newspaper or when he's on TV, you know, it's a feather in the cap to all those people that had a part of it. And Walker's very mindful of that, and I know we all certainly are too. From Lexington, Kentucky to Dodger Stadium, there has always been one constant theme, the willingness to put in the work every step of the way. Walker Bueller did this in Little League. He did it in high school. He did it in college and he continues to do it in the big leagues. Along his path, he's had coaches, family, and friends there to support him. So it's no wonder that this kid from Lexington, Kentucky has grown up to become something truly special.